Cool. So good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon to our global Nimble community. My name is John Ferrara and I couldn't be more excited to be hosting this webinar with Bryn Tillman. You know, there's a lot of people who talk about LinkedIn or social or social selling. And um, but there's very few that give you actionable insights, methodologies that are repeatable, that drive measurable success. And that's what I love about Bryn because Bryn not only uh, talks and teaches about the ideas, but she gives you step-by-step -step solutions. And I highly encourage you to reach out afterwards to uh, connect on our website because she has some amazing templates that just make this whole process super easy and I think that's one of the reasons why PeopleLinks uh, captured uh, her as their chief learning officer because she is one of the best teachers I know. Bryn? Thank you John and I can't even tell you how much I appreciate those words coming from you who in many ways, I mean I followed you long before you knew I existed you, when, you, when you first took my call maybe four or five years ago, I felt like I, I was talking to the Tom Cruise of the digital media, like digital world. You have been, I mean, as the founder of CRM, really, at least in, in my eyes, and, and everything that you've offered the world, you have really been a mentor to me even before you knew I existed. So I feel very lucky and blessed to have you in my network and to be able to do some of these things with you where we can really bring value to other people. Awesome. You're, you're really, really sweet to say uh, those things. Let's uh, pop to the next slide and let's start delivering for these people. All right. And, and by the way, what you just said, I want everybody to listen to what she said, is that she was connecting with me before I ever knew who she was. And she, Bryn just said in her presentation about breaking the ice, what you need to be doing is adding value on a daily basis by inspiring and educating other people about how they can become better, smarter, faster. And that's what I do on a daily basis because I believe that we're on this planet to grow our souls and help other people grow theirs. And we do that by being present with other people, by sharing our common passion, plan, and purpose, and finding ways to add value. And that's one of the reasons why I built Goldmine to start with, is essentially to help other people grow. And that's why I got back in the business with Nimble. And that's what I think Bryn connected with me on. And I didn't have to cold call her. She actually reached out to me. And these are the things we're going to teach you uh, during this presentations today. Specifically, how to identify your audience, how to leverage ways to get those warm introductions, how to get more qualified referrals and retention from your clients, and then how do you social media to go beyond some of the basic places like LinkedIn, and most importantly, how to prepare for every single engagement, because I believe that the moment you meet another human being, they judge you on your competency and trustfulness and I don't think I have to ask you which one of those is more important. Bryn, what do you think is more important? Uh, that's another one of those balances. So you're never going to get to the point where they know you're competent if they don't trust you though. Bingo. So I think the priority is trust and then competence keeps you there. Amen. Amen. Uh, so why don't we get started Bryn? Let's, uh, let's teach these people something. I love it. I love it. So we're going to hop into LinkedIn and this is sort of where I live so that's what we're going to primarily talk about today. That being said, everything that we do really can, um, you can focus on Twitter doing the same things and finding the right people and maybe I'll show you a couple things on there too. But we're going to primarily focus on LinkedIn today and it looked like from our, our poll that's where a lot of our people are, a lot of people on the call today are. You, uh, are leveraging for uh, social for business. So, um, so we'll start with, and I did start to talk about the profile a little bit earlier on about with a, a question. I think before we started recording, we, and we talked a little bit about the importance of your profile. Your profile needs to do one thing if you're using this for sales or for business development. It needs to convert the right people to phone calls. It needs to be the, a tool that helps you gain that trust, gain, and even the competency, right, so that they understand that you're worthy of a phone call. And that's the job of your profile, and I'm not going to dive deep in, 
to profile today, but I do want you to look at your profile from a buyer's perspective and read through here and say, would I care about this? Is this relevant to me? Because a lot of times we talk about our mission, our passion, which is great, they get to know you, but you have to earn the right for them to care about that. So you have to start with uh, what matters to them. And I, I go right from what is my value proposition down into a summary that really talks about uh, all, you know, where the market is today, where buyers are today, and some tips that can help them. And my whole LinkedIn profile, as yours should be, is a resource, not a resume. And once you have that foundation, all the other stuff will plan, play into that. So strategies to identify your target audience through company pages was the very first thing that we were going to talk about. So let's jump into that. Actually, even before we dive into that, I'm going to show you a quick thing on company pages that's pretty powerful. If you click on companies from the hamburger drop-down, and you click on, don't type anything in your search bar, and you click on that magnifying glass, and then on this left-hand side, you choose first degree connections, you can see what companies are represented in your LinkedIn connection. So there are 886 companies represented in my LinkedIn connections. So for example, I look at Bank of America, um, if I want, I'm following them, so if I wanted to view that, I am going to have at least one or more connections, so I have nine connections that work at Bank of America. So this is a great way, if you don't know where to start in prospecting, start with the people that are already existing inside of your network. Start with the companies there. So again, I'll show you that if I go into Bank of America and I click on that nine, so I'm going to go back into that company page and I click on those nine connections, what I can do, so these are all my first degree connections and I can look at um, where they are, so Vice President, Service Director, Sales and Operations Leader, maybe that's where I start, but I'm going to determine of the people in my network, who's the best one for me to reach out first? It might be the closest one or it might be someone in the right department. You can message them directly because they're your connection, but there are some people that you'll come across that you know well that maybe sending a Facebook message makes more sense or tweeting them. Uh, just a, a perfect example, um, I and it's a who's you my profile, but I noticed that one of the PTA moms, my kid's school, actually worked at SunGuard and I was dying to get in the SunGuard. I texted her because I know her on that personal level. So you want to, as much as you can, engage with your connections in the way that you would typically engage with them in the real world. Uh, but a lot of times you'll look through here and maybe you don't have that personal connection, just a connection, so I can look at Lou. Now maybe you don't remember how you connected. So you want to look, let's say we're going to choose Lou as someone that we might want to, to dive down and, and learn more. I want to find out some things about him. I want to look at my notes, if I had any notes on him, so I can, look, I can look through any of my history. I only have one note, but that's fine. My history is here. I can look at you know, how, how he's describing himself. He talks about his goals and what he's doing. I can identify if there are any um, He's part of a membership, which is great. Um, I actually have friends that are part of that, that church. So um, I, not just a coincidence, but I know a few people that are part of that church that I can reach out, I can mention as well. So I want to learn more about him. He cares about arts and culture and education and human rights. Um, he volunteers pro bono consulting. I love that about him already, right? And now he is already my connection. Um, I can look at some of the... Um, you know, the, the, the skills that he lists for himself, where he went to school, if I have any connections on that. Um, and that, so I look and I, and I can even look at um, recommendations that, of people that have, you know, that love him, right? And why. I can learn a lot from those recommendations. Who's talking about him? I can also look, even though he's my, my connection, I can also look, to, look at our shared connections. Who else do we have in common? If this is a big deal, right? These are people that we can certainly um, connect on. So once I know this, and I know that he's at Bank of America, and I'm interested in getting to Bank of America, I'm going to send him a message. And I can simply send him a message because we're connected. 
And in that message, I'll say, you know, Lou, we've been connected for some time, and you can actually see how long we connected in 2012. So we've been connected for over four years, but we haven't really had the chance to chat. Uh, as I was researching Bank of America, your name came up, and I thought this would be a good opportunity for us to connect and maybe set up a brief call. I also noticed that you're part of a church that one of my closest friends, Patty Lombardi, is, is a member of, and um, I thought that was kind of, you know, I thought that's something that we could talk about too. I've been to services with her a few times. Right? And whatever that is, I'm going to bring in some of these conversations and connect. So, I love, how the, I love how naturally you just come up with these simple outreaches, Bryn. Um, in that outreach, did you say anything that uh, is, is about adding value to him? So you I said could, you connect, right? Yeah, I could. I could absolutely say, you know, um, as you may know or as you may have noticed, um, I help a lot of people with LinkedIn, and I'd be very happy to share some insights that can help you increase your sales, you know, as a sales and operations leader, I could offer some insights. I would absolutely say that, right? As a sales and operations leader, I'd be happy to add some insights that can help uh, make 2017 a, you know, a, a record year. Especially if you'd been doing that for some of his peers at another group of Bank of America or even another bank, right? Absolutely. Um, and you can bring all of that up. And so you want to, the key is that you, like you'll, there'll be some templates and at the end of this I'm going to, happy to share all my templates with everybody on, on the call. But I never just send the template. It's just so I don't have to rewrite certain things like, you know, I'm looking forward to call, here's a link to my calendar, please pick a time that works for you. That's pretty much standard, I send that all the time. But, uh, you know, it, it does save a lot of time to have a basic template to start with, but you've got to customize them so that they feel special, that they know you reached out them to them directly. You know, one of the things, John, and I, I, I'm curious how you feel about this, but, like, I, I'll get an email. There are particular people, actually colleagues of mine, like, that are in the business, and I'll get an email that says, hey, Bryn, Tillman at peoplelinks.com because my email fit into their name column inside of their, their email client. And so it, all of a sudden I look at that and I'm like, this is so, I mean, that's a mass email that's going out. It, it's so wrong, right? And you're like, at, there's, and there are lots of people all over and it's very canned. And it's, you know, it's inside of my LinkedIn. It's not even a typical, like, like constant contact type email. But, um, that that personalization, if you're in sales, I mean, and this is really for sales, this is not a marketing thing, this is a sales thing, it really is valuable and worth every minute to take the time to, to really make each of these people know that you took the time to care about them. Well, I, I, Brent, I, I think that what you're bringing up here is so critically important because every time you send a mass email to your contacts, you're lowering your trust and relationship uh, score with them. And so I get emails like this from things like Infusionsoft and Constant Contact and MailChimp from people I know. And they send me emails that I know that went out to 5,000 people and they're not personalized even though they know the answers to the questions. Here's an example. I got an invite to some startup uh, uh, conference in San Francisco, and in it, he, he said at the end, hey, John, if you are an investor with VC backing or if you're an accredited investor, uh, let me know and I'll send you passes for the backstage after party. Well, this guy knows that I'm an investor uh, that's accredited because we're an investor in the same company, and he knows I am a, a, a have VC backing because he's been in meetings at Google with me who are investors in Nimble. And so we're over-connected and over-communicated in our world today, and in order for you to cut through the noise, you need to reach out in a one-to-one, -one, relevant, and authentic way, and there are better ways to do it even at scale. So there are tools that would enable you to send a templated email that is filled out with variables from contacts, your contacts, as well as the details about them that come from your email, my John at Nimble, rather than an Infusionsoft, and so it feels personalized. So at the very least, if you are going to outreach, outreach to a small subset, not 10,000, but more like 10 or 20 or at most 100, and make it personal. 
I did this when I went and spoke at uh, World Partner Conference uh, in Toronto for Microsoft, and I imported a Twitter list in a nimble of 3,600 influencers from last year's WPC conference. I then segmented that out to a very small subset, and I got a 50% open rate, and I scheduled 25 meetings, which resulted in Microsoft deciding to start reselling Nimble with Office 365, and this is the kind of thing that anybody listening can do if they start practicing some of the things you're teaching them today, Bryn. Oh, that's great, and I'm, I'm happy to hear that's official. That's exciting. It is. Uh, that is awesome. Um, so that, that's, that's great, and I, I love how aligned we are. Um, the next piece on company pages is, is fine if you have a specific company you're going after. So let's say I want to get into Campbell Soup. I'm going to go into their um, company page where I was before, and I have one connection there, but what, what if I didn't have any connections there? I have a new connection there. So I can go and see all of their connections, and I want to break this down. So I do have one first degree connection, but he's a photographer. We're going to pretend I don't have any. And I'm going to break this down to just second degree connections. So who in the company might I know that I'm looking to meet? Um, that, that I, that, who in the company has a shared connection with me, meaning a friend of a friend. So if I drill down here, I can also go into advanced search where, by the way, this is going to be changing significantly where um, everything we're about to do is going to be done through Boolean search. So John, maybe when, when LinkedIn makes their big shift to the new structure, we'll, we'll do this again and teach people how to do this, the search the new way. But for now, on the existing way, we do second degree connections and advance. And once we do that, and we go back to second degree, we can now put in the titles of the people that we might want to meet. So if I want someone VP of marketing or let's say VP of sales, we'll see, currently in that position, I can take that 510 and bring it down to the two people that I might want to meet. So I can filter that down and I can see now, remember I said second degree connections. Why do I want to do that? Because I can see Phyllis, who is a client and now a friend, can make an introduction into Fran for me. And I have two people, Jamie or Aubrey, that can make an introduction into Diego for me. So now I'm starting to leverage my warm market to identify who can help me gain access to specific decision makers inside of targeted companies. This is huge. Now, what would I do? I'm going to send you a template that's going to look exactly like this. We'll do one as an example. So let's say I'm going to go to Phyllis, and I'm going to send Phyllis a message. Remember, she's my connection. And so this is a template that I'll send you, and then you will customize them for yourself. But I'm going to simply fill in the name and put in Campbell Soup, right? So I hope this note finds you well. As you may know, I'm leveraging LinkedIn to grow my network and notice you're connected to Fran at Campbell Soup. I was wondering if you kindly provide an introduction for me. If you could copy us both in an email or LinkedIn message, I can take it from there. To make it easier for you, I've included a short paragraph below that you're welcome to copy and paste. Also, please feel free to look through my connections. I'm happy to make introductions for you as well. And then I have a little note of, I'd like to introduce you to Bryn Tillman, Chief Learning Officer of People Inks. So all she has to do is copy that. We make it really, really simple. Now, Phyllis is someone I can text now and say, Phyllis, how well do you know Fran at Campbell Soup? If I send you over a connection request, would you be able to make an introduction? And I would do it in that casual way because that's where our relationship is now. Does that make sense? I love the way that you make it so simple, and if any of you want to get snippets of what Bryn's talking about, just go through her Twitter identity at at, uh, at Bryn Tillman on, on Twitter, and she's got each of these compacted into small little ebooks that you could learn all of these little tricks, including what's new in the upcoming LinkedIn that she did a post recently uh, about that. Oh, thanks, John. Yeah, and for the templates, if you connect with me on LinkedIn with a little note saying, please send templates, I will send them to you. It's a really easy way to get started. Um, so, I mean, they, this is pretty powerful, um, and you really want to look at this as much as possible. The next thing I want to talk about 
um, and really I think is important is engaging with your existing and new connections. Because I think one of the biggest problems on LinkedIn, the biggest gaps, I think, is that we connect and forget. And, you know, it's like if we kept going to networking meetings every single night and meeting people and then never following up ever, what good are those networking meetings? You know, Brian, I, lo I love to tell stories along this uh, in order for people to remember things. And a story about relationships is like rockets and cars in that it takes most of the fuel to get up to speed in a rocket or a car than it does to maintain the speed. And so relationships are the same way. So many people connect and then don't follow up and follow through, which is the basics of winning games. But even if they did follow up and follow through and establish a relationship, then they let that relationship slip over time. And May West said, out of sight is out of mind, and out of mind is out of money, honey. And how do you stay top of mind with people? You don't do it by a quarterly newsletter or by only communicating them when you need something. You need to reach out on a regular basis, like that person that spins the plates on their finger in the, in the shopping mall. All you gotta do every once in a while is just tap the plate in a in a way where you're paying that relationship forward and you can maintain relationships beyond what they call the Dunbar limit. I love that. I think that's a great great resource. Good. Um, so and, and I and I, I do agree stories have people remembering that without the story it just became a lecture. So <laughs> I think that's great. Um, so, so engaging your first degree connection. So the first thing we're going to do is low hanging fruit. Um, actually, this is there may not be your first degree connections yet, but it's leveraging who's viewed your profile. So if you click on who's viewed your profile, you're able in the free account at least to see the last five. In the paid account, you can see the last ninety days. And I can scroll through here and see who's looking at me. Now, there's a good chance a lot of you guys are on this. Uh, that are on this webinar right now because that's very typical. Um, so hello if you are. So I can look at, at Jean Carr. Jean, I hope you don't mind if you are on the webinar that I am going to use you as an example. So Jean Carr is an executive coach. He's a second degree connection. He viewed my profile. I want to now go learn about Jean and say, is this someone that I want to learn more about? I can also look to see Jean did ask to connect with me, and I know that because it says accept invitation here instead of invite. So that that's a great thing. So I look, he's an executive coach. He's out of Ottawa, which is a beautiful place to be. I love that. Harvard Business School, very, very successful guy. Look through. So I may not know much about him, but what I do want to do, since I know he has an invitation, is I want to see if, in fact, he sent a note before I accept his connection request because I can accept it here and not see that. If I look here, he did. So I just click, clicked through my outstanding connections and it's very nice. Yes, he is on the call. Hi, Gene. Right? So, um, and I will definitely send you those templates right now. So I see that and I'm going to now, I decide, yes, I'm going to accept Gene's connection and I'm going to click on his name again. Now we're connected. I can send him a message. And I'm going to send him. Thanks for connecting on LinkedIn. I'm not sure if you're using LinkedIn for sales, but if you are, I want to share with you some of our LinkedIn message templates that can have a big impact on your business development. I'm also going to invite you to be part of my group. And I'm going to let you know I'm going to add you to my email unless you'd prefer that I don't. And then I send that message out. And I've now engaged with my new connection. You want to have two welcome messages. One mes welcome message is providing some kind of real value or insight. The second one that you want to have that's really important um, is one that you're asking for a call for one reason or another. So it, it could be, you know, and typically I will have something that uh, has the link to my calendar so that um, they can schedule a time to talk with me just based on whomever it is that you're accepting. So at that point now we are connected and I've engaged with Jean. Many times people will come back and say thank you, those templates were great, and I start a, a continue a conversation. I would also have normally, but for time didn't do this, 
looked at something on his profile and mentioned something in common or maybe we had some shared connections or I'm really impressed with um, how people, you know, the rec I read some of the recommendations you received. I'm really impressed with, you know, the, how, how people view you. You know, we have two shared connections. Maybe I mentioned, um, oh, I see you know Martin. He's pretty awesome. How well do you know him? I've been connected with him for some time. So I would have added something that brought us together as well. So Brent, again, Brent, yeah. I think this area that you're covering is so important. I just want to pause and reinforce some of the things that you just shared in that um, it's important to nurture your garden in LinkedIn in that you need to go and look at your invitations that are sent to you, the invitation you've sent to others, and the people viewing your profile and do the appropriate thing with these, including um, reviewing the message before you accept because the message just disappears. And I don't know if you know Doug Campbell John over at uh, LinkedIn, I but, I, but, but I think that uh, regular conversations and giving them feedback is important because this is a critical sort of uh, hole in the relationship workflow here, whereas if you accept an invitation, then that message sort of disappears and it's not connected to the contact record, so you can't see that in the future, but if somebody reaches out to you and they say something specific, if you just accept it and you don't address what they might be saying, which is an opportunity to go deeper and go further in the relationship, I think you lose things. What do you think? So I love that and I've had many well, I've had a couple conversations with Doug and I've had many conversations with the product team and with a lot of feedback that actually has newly changed, I will love to know this, that any personal message is now going to be in the inbox. So it's not attached to the record, which would be great, but his initial message is now in the inbox, thank goodness. That's, so that's good. That's a very new feature that's rolled out so in the last. The next time you talk to him, let's get the messages connected to the contact record. But then the other thing is this: what you said was, I have two templates. One that I reach out and just accept and acknowledge the invitation, uh, and maybe mention something about their profile or the message they sent to me. But I'm not sending my calendar link. But for others, I do send the calendar link, which is sort of like there's certain people that you just connect with and, and they're there. There's certain people that you connect with and you want to have a next step with. But ultimately, they should all have a next action that's over time, especially if they fit the profile of somebody that you should be nurturing over time. And this is something that I think everybody listening to this should develop a process for that follow-up and follow-through, knowing you know what kind of people that fit the persona of the person that they most want to connect and stay connected to. And this isn't just prospects and customers, but it's influencers of those prospects and customers as well. I, that's great. I love that. And, and I will send a little message to Doug and, and let him know. I know Sales Navigator has a ton more features that are rolling out, um, and that could be one of them, but I will find out for sure. Cool. Um, I think I think that's great. So I'm going to just um, piggyback on what you just said on new connections. Um, if I sent out, so I hear, so so if I got a um, a new connection, well, you'll see here it says um, Gene Carr is now a new connection. If I hadn't responded yet, it would say that right here is a new connection. So I would know, and it would actually still be an, uh, an unread message. So if I go to all my unread messages, um, it will stand out if I have. So Allison Trapp accepted your invitation. So I reached out to Allison. Um, so I, I reached out. She must have said something nice about one of, uh, probably one of my last blog posts. Um, she mentioned something. I said she, I was happy for her mom. I'd love to connect on LinkedIn. Now she's connected. Now in this particular case, I have a very different message I'm going to write, so I'm not going to do that now because this is a little bit more personal. But in my, right here, what it's telling me, though, is this is an opportunity for me to engage with someone that has accepted my connection request. And now LinkedIn is giving us the ability to correspond um, without having to go through our emails to see who accepted or even going through notifications to see who's recently accepted. So I would have a welcome message. So similar to what I may have sent uh, to Jean, but I, I mean I would have a welcome message 
particular to Allison, I'd customize it a bit and start a conversation if in fact that made sense. So every day if you're out there accept, um, asking people to connect, make sure you're checking to see who's accepted your invitation and start those conversations. This is a perfect opportunity to do that. The next opportunity, and wow, I think I had three outstanding connections when I started today, John. So we've got lots of people connecting. That's really exciting. So oh, we're at 33. Boy, guys, you're fast. I love it. So I'm now going to look at all my open invitations. Um, hello, uh, Richard. So I can see he's got a lovely note. Now I'm going to go back and read that later. Thank you very much. And then I'll start to accept. And I want to make sure, well, I'll do that now. I'll read it later, I promise. I'm going to accept Richard. And now what I'm going to do, and I, I typically will right-click open a new tab so I don't lose my place. I go to Richard. I'm going to send him, I have to refresh. I am going to send him a message. And I'm going to send him for now the same one without customizing it too much because of time that I sent out to Jean. And so now I am engaging with all my new connections. Brandon, a lot of people asking for the templates. Would you mind posting those inside the questions area so that uh, people can uh, just make sure that they have that? Because I didn't see the link on the slides. Uh, yeah, so the call to action at the end is if they connect with me on LinkedIn, I will be happy to send Perfect. them. Perfect. So that's and I don't. I'd have to go hunt for the link right now. That's fine. Um, and, and are you using a uh, tool to insert the text I, uh, from your templates? Yeah. Could you yeah, talk so about that for a second? Absolutely, and that was certainly, uh, I think it's definitely worth the time. It's called Auto Text Expander. So if you go to the Chrome store, it only works in Chrome. If you go to the Chrome store, it says Chrome Web Store, and it's the same place you'll get your Nimble app, right? And then I'm going to go in here, but I'm going to ask for Auto Text Expander, and it's going to bring this up. It's a blue box. And where it says Add to Chrome, it would say Add to Chrome here. You're going to click Add to Chrome, and it's going to open this up. And this is my auto text expander, and I can simply go, so I can say nimble rocks, right? And I save that, and anytime I type NB, so uh, Richard, I'm going to send you another message. Uh, but if I go in and I type NB, it's going to expand, and I can have this be, I have, so this is my Boolean search. So when I'm in LinkedIn, I'll just show you if I'm in a, a LinkedIn search. And I want to do Boolean search. I don't have to retype Vice President Sales, Chief Revenue Officer. And I can do. I have to do it. I have to do one other thing. So is Boolean it case search. sensitive? Um, Boolean search is case sensitive. Oh, is this case sensitive? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna. So I had ABM rocks. That was the last webinar I did. <laughs> Um, we'll take these out now, otherwise I'm going to get that spitting out. So I have all my things. So I have, uh, you know, I have um, uh, LinkedIn call. Thanks. This is my LinkedIn if I want a phone call. If you're open, I would love to set up a brief introductory call. I'd be happy to share some LinkedIn strategies that can help your team prospect better to schedule a call. So all I have to do is LIC, right? So if that was what I wanted to do and I wanted to send another message and I want to send LIC, that's my template, but I'm never just sending it this way. I'm going to go through with thanks for connecting me on LinkedIn, and then I'm going to put in here, I noticed something we are connected to, right? So I'm going to always add that, but I still have my basic let's set up a phone call afterwards. So it saves me retyping all of that. So that all lives in Auto Text Expander. This also lives in my phone. So all of these templates are, and do you ever type on your phone, John? You know, you type something that says, I'm in a meeting, I'll call you later. You're like, ah, I didn't want that to happen. You can actually control those. So on your phone, at least in the iPhone, if you go into um, settings, general, keyboard, text replacement, you can paste all of these with short code, and you can use them on your phone as well. And I actually use them on my phone as much as I use them here on, on um wonder if I have, if I can get this link, is that, let's see, I bet I can do a link this way and I can put this in the chat so people can go right to Text Expander. 
So what you're saying is if uh, if I type in OMW, it types in on my way is like one text replacement thing. I see that. I could just edit all these right in there. Oh, my yeah. God. Brynn, I love you. Isn't that, that alone amazing? that alone is is worth this webinar because there, there's so many times I want to put my calendarly link inside of uh, an email and I use uh, templates inside of Gmail um, to do that now I have nimble to do that for me in, in Gmail but I don't have that on my phone and I am so excited I'm so excited yay I just and it's can't great. Hide. It's already existing, <laughs> right I love it that's awesome. So I think those are some of the really important things that we should focus on. Um, you know, another thing that is really important is leveraging your clients and your network. Um, so I have some, some good news and some sad news. So the good news is what I'm about to show you will probably work for the next three weeks in free. And then it's moving into Sales Navigator, which, by the way, is next to Nimble, the most important tool in your and I believe in your, I mean, people links as well. So there's three. <laughs> um, very important tool in your sales stack. Um, so I do really believe in Sales Navigator very much. I do not make any money off of Sales Navigator. So I'm not like saying that for any reason except it's a valuable tool. So what I'm going to show you, use now. And then um, when it's no longer available in your free account, certainly happy to have a conversation on if Sales Navigator is a good decision for you. Um, but the, the, this will still exist, you'll just have to pay for it. And I don't blame them because it's probably one of the most powerful, in my opinion, features that LinkedIn has, which is the ability to search your connections' connections. And so I do this for every client that's happy. I do this for my networking partners. Um, if we're going to meet for coffee and the, or meet to help each other grow our business, I'm going to go in and see who my connection knows that I might want to meet. And I may even ask them if there's anyone that you know I'm connected to, in fact I will ask them, offer them to look through my connections in the same way and pull out some names of people they'd like to meet and then when we, ha when we get together or we have a phone call we can review the list together. And so. I'll say sometimes pick out 15 or 20 names and then after we talk it'll be three or five, three to five um, introductions that I'll be able to make on your behalf. And then I do the same thing. So when you click on the 500, that, uh, 500 plus at the top you have to be connected and it's going to take you to the connection section. From here you're going to put in that Boolean search of the types of people that you want to meet. So Sally Joe has thousands and thousands of connections. We have a lot of the similar types of connections. We're in business together. And she has 324 people that meet the criteria I might want to meet. And I click through to advanced search here. And now I'm sure we overlap a ton. So I'm going to click second degree connections, which are the connections she knows that I don't know yet. And I get down to 211. And maybe for the sake of I don't feel like driving this week, I only want to see the ones in the greater Philadelphia area. And now I'm down to 38. That's only four pages to look through. There's 10 on a page. So now I look through this list, and I make from the 38 maybe 12, 15, a list of 12 or 15 people that Sally Joe knows that I want to meet. And when we have our meeting, if it's a client, I can simply say, you know, Sally Joe, we've been working together for some time. I know you're really thrilled with everything that we've done. I hope you don't mind, but I noticed you're connected to 12 people on LinkedIn that I'm trying to get in front of. Do you mind if I run these names by you? And you have a conversation, which will ultimately turn into a few really productive, targeted introductions. And then you do this with your networking partners as well, and it's a real game changer. I love that. I love that. Um, I think that there are some incredible tools and tips that people can start using uh, in their outreach in social, specifically in LinkedIn. Let's spend five minutes talking about some of the other networks and how we can leverage them. Why don't you pass me the ball? Uh, let me, yep, let's see. I'm going to, first time I'm passing this, so bear with me one second. I'm going to go to your name. And make presenter. I think I did it. Awesome. Okay, so let me know when you can see my screen. I can see your screen. Okay.
So, Brian, I really believe that all the stuff that you're talking about demonstrates how powerful LinkedIn is as a networking and prospecting tool, and specifically LinkedIn Sales Navigator, to be able to leverage some of the deeper uh, functionality that we all need in order to build and nurture our networks. What I often tell people, though, is that if you're trying to get to know another human being, it's important to get to know them across multiple different points of contact because ultimately for you to reach out and maintain, build and maintain that relationship, you're going to be need to be doing on whatever channel is most comfortable for them. And I think that when you start relationships, they may start in one place, shift to another and another and another, and then go back and forth between them. And so I'm going to tell you the story about me meeting this guy, Jim Clausen. Jim Clausen happens to run digital for IBM and is a big influencer, not just within the IBM ecosystem, but also within just the ecosystem of people interested in social selling and social business. Now, the way I met Jim is I regularly inspire and educate other people about how they can become better, smarter, faster by sharing content that's inspirational, educational. Ideally, then I'm not having to uh, cold call anybody because people call me. They pick up the phone and call me and reach out to me because I'm sharing content that inspires and educates them. And, uh, and these connections start in soft places like Twitter and uh, and that's how my relationship with Jim started. And then that relationship shifted to a LinkedIn connection, and then eventually uh, a series of emails, uh, appointments on calendars. And now we stay connected on places like Instagram and so ultimate and Facebook. And so ultimately, I think that uh, we're, relationships are messy. They occur wherever they're comfortable, and that really the heart of most of our relationships happen inside of email. In fact, and so that's one of the reasons why I think that there's 225 million global businesses and less than 1% use any CRM because I think most people's CRM is their contact manager. Uh, so whether you're talking about Outlook address book or Google contacts, you need a relationship platform that unifies the contacts, the email, the calendar that you're doing across either of these places and then unifies them into a singular record that gives you the details across all their profiles, gives you the history of interactions that you and the team have had, and then enables you to um, walk in their footprint, add value to the conversation, but most importantly, the follow-up and follow-through, because that is where most business relationships fail. So what I'm going to do is share a quick tip on how to prospect in other places. And let's just say that you found this person, Jim Clausen, and you want to not only connect with Jim, but you want to connect with people like Jim. So one of the things that we've built with Nimble is our Nimble Smart Contacts app that will build or bring up profiles on anyone, anywhere, uh, and you just turn it on and it does its beautiful thing. But what I love to do is I love to prospect people through Twitter lists. And so a Twitter list is a list that either a person has built about people they're interested in. And so this is a list that Jim's built about people that he's interested in. And so if I'm interested in connecting with thought leaders uh, from the recent um, Connect uh, speakers, I could easily go in here and grab these people and import them into Nimble. When you import names into Nimble, Nimble automatically builds these beautiful records and keeps them up to date and enables you to begin to connect with them. But more interesting than, than list that Jim's built, but list that Jim's on. In other words, how do people value Jim? So you could quickly figure out what kind of people Jim values and what kind of people value Jim and what areas of expertise, and then actually go find more people like them. So if I wanted to find more social selling experts to go out and network with, I could easily import this list of 5,000 people and begin to then segment them within the program for the outreach, which is essentially what I did to prepare for WPC uh, 16 when I spoke there and so if I want to find people that let's say are influential so I just imported that 5,000 social selling uh, influencers now what I want to find is people of the of that group that fit and are influential in entrepreneurship and marketing and maybe I want those people in a particular location like San Francisco because that's where the conference might be. And so what Nimble enables you to do is to prospect in whatever network that you're working in and then to do these outreaches. And when you outreach, it is a one-to-one -one personal email because I go ahead and select all those people and I can then send this group message where this email comes from my email to their email. So instead of it looking like an 
Fusionsoft outreach that essentially is something you throw away. It's an email that comes from you to them and then you get the details on the opens and clicks. And so ultimately I truly believe that um, you need to listen and engage on whatever channel is most comfortable for your prospects, customers, and ideally their influencers. And I'll tell you what, I get more done on my uh, uh, some of the software networks and stay more connected with these people because you're connecting with them on the common passion plan and purpose in life. And so don't forget all the other networks. You need to have an identity across all the places that your prospects and customers are connecting on. And uh, and let's give these guys uh, something to take away. So uh, but I'd like to add to that for a second. First of all, I think that's absolutely phenomenal. And the fact that you can drill down uh, to marketing in San Francisco is unbelievable. And that's where you can personalize those notes because you're going to send a note and you know everyone in there is in marketing in San Francisco and immediately you can say, I, you know, I noticed you're in marketing in the San Francisco area and wanted to reach out and now it feels incredibly personal. Well, That's absolutely. This is what amazing. we started the whole, this is how we started the whole thing, right? So uh, what I did is I took those 4,000 influencers from WPC 15 and I sent them a one-to-one -one message inviting them uh, because they share common passion in uh, sales and marketing and digital and I'd love to have you come and join me for this conversation I got a 50% open rate Bryn I mean that is like mind-boggling right that's and yeah, it's usually and, 7 to 15 percent if you're lucky exactly exactly and so um, there's a lot of tools there's a lot of techniques up on Bryn's website she has a lot of different resources make sure that you connect with Bryn She'll send you her sales process templates. And the other thing that I do is I just start listening uh, to what she says and, uh, and follow her. And so uh, what you can do is, is you can go ahead and uh, connect with Bryn. Uh, and she has a ton of content on her site that she shares on a daily basis. Um, and then if you want to try Nimble, if you're not already using Nimble, uh, Bryn has set up a 30-day trial. Normally it's two weeks. Uh, Bryn has uh, uh, worked out a uh, package from Nimble. So just go to nimble.com forward slash Bryn Tillman and you'll get your 30-day free trial of Nimble. And, uh, and then let us know how we can help you become better, smarter, faster, how we can help you grow because I truly believe that that's what we're on this planet to do is to uh, grow our souls and help other people do grow theirs. And so please connect with us and let us know how we can serve you. And Bryn, I just want to say I am grateful to you for not just your amazing insights and techniques, but just for you as a human being. I, I, I love you, and, uh, and I, really, I really appreciate your friendship. I really appreciate yours too, and I'm crying because that just I you are such a big part of my professional journey and now personal journey, and I am grateful to have this friendship as well. Awesome, thank you, uh, everybody. We uh, actually got it done by eleven o'clock. Uh, good luck and good selling, and uh, warm wishes and love during the holidays. Uh, be sure to take time to be present with the people that matter in your life not just during the holidays, but throughout the rest of your life, because that's all you got is those moments when you're connected to people that you love and care about you. Thank you.